Okay, today we're going to try and get in some more silk reeling. This time we're going to do more of the uh, Chan Si Gong, which is of the uh, Chen Zhao Wang variety, the, the person, Chen Zhao Wang, sort of uh, head of the Chen family at the moment. Uh, this one is a little bit more derived from the actual routines. Uh, especially the, you know, um, well, both the, uh, the the old frame ones, the Lao Jia. The Lao Jia Ilu, Lao Jia Erlu. One and two, E, or one and two. And uh, the Lao Jia Ilu, I can't remember if I've said this before, is actually where it was what uh, Yang Lu Sen learned when he, and then he went on to create Gong style Tai Chi. Uh, so Chen Zhao Wang, a lot of times, uh, what, what's been going on in, in the last couple of, We'll call it generations, is that things have been kind of broken down a little bit more. Young and Chen families have kind of done this where they've had they have these shorter routines. Uh, for example, the Yang family has the 13, the 16, the 49, and these will kind of lead you up into learning the long form, which has various ways of this this uh, figuring out it, you know, 83, 91, 108, 103. It depends upon how you kind of number and, and figure out where some of the postures are. But they've broken things down into smaller sort of bites sort of things. Because kind of gone are the days of, okay, well, you know, you you come in and you, you know, the teacher plays or the his students play. And if you can keep up and catch up and, and it looks like you're really doing stuff, maybe someone takes you aside, really kind of shows you kind of the ropes and how things work. And, you know, you're still open door student. You keep going after several years. You keep showing growth you keep showing commitment maybe someone makes you a closed door student maybe and maybe that's after you know three years of just santi or just you know uh horse dance training or something like that gone are those days um for good or ill i don't really have too much of an opinion on that i know for me a lot of times it helps breaking things down and then i like asking questions and stuff so that's helpful for me but i i've also i can also sit there and kind of be like all right follow and mimic the best you can and, and keep working and figuring it out. What was nice kind of back in the old days was sort of the idea that the teacher is doing you a favor by teaching you instead of you doing a favor, but like they owe you because you're paying them money. Now, yes, we do have, okay, you know, exchange for good and services, but a lot of times now you get the sort of same behavior you get at any retail or restaurant establishment where because I might be buying something here, that gives me the right to be a butthead to you. Now, I, eh, you'll see a lot of that and a lot of things, even martial arts. But in order to accommodate not only the difference in terms of some of the way people are approaching training, but also just the difference in terms of everyday life, it, you know, the, there's a much more sort of the hustle and bustle sort of thing. So some people aren't able to do an hour, two, three hours a day or something like that of training. They can only put in... 20 minutes, half an hour, something along those lines. Maybe it it complements some other workouts that they're doing. So some of these things have been uh, made to be like these sort of smaller uh, bits. That you can still get genuine training in, but in, in, in these sort of smaller kind of ways instead of having to play, you know, just learning the long form over and over again. To wit, uh, I think I've explained on the other ones, a silk reeling and how it leads from the lower Dantian. Make nice, smooth, circular motions leading from here. This is what leads. The rest of the body follows. I think, again, what I'm repeating myself a little bit. It's uh, highlighted mostly in Taiji. But if you play Xingyi, you play Bagua, it should be in that too. Uh, and also, one of the things I want to talk about here as well is shifting and then turning the body. Again, some of this is going to be a repeat from the other silk reeling stuff. Shoulders and hips together like one box. We do not break the box. This all rotates together. You're rotating that center line from the crown of the head through to coming out the perineum. So the bai hui over the hui yin. That's the hotter line. That's the pivot line that we're pivoting on. We do not want to break that line. So in other words, we don't want to do this. We don't want to do this. We don't want to do this anything else like that to break that pivot line. Now, we also want to keep a couple things in mind as well. Your alignments of the knees and the feet, 
The knees and the feet need to be in line. You should be able to feel your weight pressing into the ground through the heels, not kind of getting stuck in your knees or your ankle or your hip. So that knee foot alignment, so if, you know, if my foot is facing this way, sort of thing, and this is kind of backwards, you know, um, knee, foot, facing the same way. I'm going to kind of shift the camera here a little bit. Uh, but also we want to push from heel to heel. So as we kind of push side to side here, I'm loading in from one side, this side is full, this side is empty, and I push and that weight transfers from one side to the other. As I push, I twist side to side. Now there's gonna be a few things in here. Again, it's gonna be a little hard for me to, to try and really show given I don't have a lot of space or like a lot of the recording equipment, but there will be some stepping exercises with this too. We wanna to remember the Tai Chi stepping. We just don't walk whatever. The weight is on the one leg. We lift up the other leg, we step out. So we wanna step forward and we wanna step out about shoulder width. Doesn't have to be super long, doesn't have to be super wide. You wanna stay within a sort of shoulder width squared sort of area with you. You set the heel down, set the foot down, this front leg is still empty, and then you push to make it full. We're gonna rock back slightly to toe out. Again, 45, we wanna make everything nice and lined up and step through and the feet are going to walk like this. So there's a curve. The back foot will come in and out. We're not going to stop. It's going to just curve right out. Again, about shoulder width. So I'm going to be, if I'm here, I'm going to rock back to toe out. As I come in, bring in the weight, the foot comes in, heel up, come in, step out, heel, foot, and then press forward with the weight and pushing, like if this is the heel, we're pushing with the heel. So that's how we're basically gonna do uh, some of this. Again, nice and smooth round movements. And uh, again, with the breathing. So we're gonna inhale, pulling in the Dantian, lower Dantian to the spine, exhale, it pushes forward. Breathe in and out, nice and even, nice and easy breaths. All right, so I'm gonna uh, get a different angle here and we're gonna get started. All right, we should be going along here. Okay, so the Chan Si Gong from mostly Chen Jiao Wang. Chen style starts in the way that I hate. I really dislike this. Um, I've seen people that say, oh, well, you, the feet together and step out and that's teaching, oh, you know, they throw the punch and you move. Well, that's why we have the sideways stepping and things like uh, wave hands, like moving clouds. Doesn't need to be in the beginning anyway. To me, personally, it's superfluous, but it's Chen style, so we're gonna start like Chen style. Sorry for the gleamingness on here. So, feet are gonna be together. My weight, I'm gonna sink. My weight's gonna be on my left leg, or right leg, sorry, a little dyslexic. Lift up my right, my left heel. Let me see if I can get out of the sun. Nope. Let's try this. Up. Shoulder width. We're not going too wide. Don't go crazy. Now look, I'm stepping out on my heel. This leg is empty. I set the foot down. Heel. And I'm going to push nice and even. 50-50 on the weight. I'm going to recenter. So from here, we're gonna take a moment. Just be not. I have a slight bend in my knees, a little bit, little bit of time under tension, making sure that my knees tra will track out over my toes, tailbone tucked in, shoulders over the hips. All I'm doing right now with the head up, chin in, tongue behind the teeth at the roof of the mouth, is getting myself sort of set, taking a couple breaths, making sure my alignments are all correct. From here, we're gonna go into a few breaths of Zan Zhuang, the standing pose posture. I'm gonna inhale, as I inhale, I lift the wrists in front of my body, and I settle in to the standing posture. So my arms are nice and rounded, wrists about shoulder height, elbows slightly below the wrists. It's almost like I'm holding a big ball, and it's all resting on my legs. 
My arms are nice and relaxed. There's a slight curve around my shoulders and chest. And feel yourself to root. And then feeling Hongjing, so that ward off energy, being able to expand, keeping the center safe, rounded energy. As I exhale, I'm going to release slowly, keep, the, keep engaged, not tense, but engaged. I'm going to take my left hand over my right. You want to put whatever hand that you write with on your Dantian. And we're going to make slow circles, getting the focus of the mind and the energy to sink. Let's reverse. Same as before, what we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. So all you people who hated algebra out there, tough. One more circle. Good. Now we're going to do one hand spiral in front of the body. And keep your hand here on the Dantian, curved up. Or on the hip, I usually go with the hip. And we're going to step out a little bit wider, so kind of a horse stance. I'm going to toe out 45 degrees. Knees are tracking out over the feet. Scoop the left hand. Again, shift the weight, twist the waist. Notice I'm not hinging, I'm not leaning back. Nice and straight. As I roll up, I lift. Rotate the forearm, the elbow's still low, I'm not activating the shoulder. Pull across by the face, pull down, and scoop. Sun is right in my eye. Wish they would not have taken down the awnings. Used to be awnings on here and they were super helpful. We had to reside the house and then uh, we didn't bother putting the awnings back up. Especially in spring and autumn makes things kind of difficult. Nice and even. We're just going to breathe in. Breathe out. Big, smooth, circular motions. Do one more going this way. And let's do the other side now. So my left hand is coming into my hip. My right hand scoops, lifts, and across. Up. And over. Pull down. Scoop. Now when I'm saying these basically verbs. It's the mind and almost the imagination that's making that action sort of engaging with that. Not tensing the muscle and falling down. We don't want to do that. We want to keep that smooth, relaxed motion going. And you're using almost that imagination to make that intent be able to be uh, expressed. So this would be Jing. You don't see Qi, you see Jing, the expression. So last one this way. Good, now again, what we do to one side, we do to the other. So I'm gonna bring in my right hand down Bring my left hand back up, but I'm going to reverse. So we went out, we're going to go in. So I'm going to push, smooth down, rotate, lift, and push. 
smooth down, rotate, lift, and push. Again, I'm still pushing from heel to heel. My body is turning from 45 degrees to 45 degrees. So if you stand dead smack in the middle of the room, your navel and sternum together should be facing the corners. We want the navel and sternum together. We don't want to bind up the thoracic hinge, which is this middle part here. Sometimes over rotating can make the sternum go one way and the navel go the other. And that will bind that area up. There's one thing and one Qigong thing that we'll do with that. And that is because it's actually working on the liver. So it's massaging the area if you do it correctly. And do one more. Otherwise, we want to keep everything together. Switch hands left to the hip. Right hand pushes. Smooth down. Lift up. Face full of sun. Push. Remember to breathe in and out. Two more. Good. So here and release. Now we're going to do the same thing only with stepping to the side. So same pattern as when we sort of uh, began. I'm going to be give myself a little bit more room. Hand on the hip, weight goes on to the right leg, lift up the left heel, come up, step out heel first, then the foot, and push and twist. Lift up the heel, step in. This basic pattern of stepping is going to be in all in Chen and Yang style Tai Chi. Step. I'm stepping back a little bit so you can see a little more. But this same basic pattern of empty, lift, step out onto the heel, set the foot down, and shift. We can go forward and back with this, side to side, and then there's the center. There's your five steppings. Last one. I'm out of frame, so I'm gonna switch. My weight's on the left, lift up the right heel, step out, pull across, shift, and step in. Nice big circles, keeping the space between the arm and the body about a fist distance. So we don't wanna completely collapse the arm against the body. One more here. Release slowly. Now we're going to do two hand spiral in front of the body. It's the same thing, only we're using both hands at the same time. One important thing to remember for this, just like the yin and yang symbol, the hands aren't combatants to each other. They're complementary to each other. So we want to think more like two poles on a sphere than two things trying to, to fight each other. We're not, we're not doing that. Nature isn't really like that. Despite what people might have misled you to believe about nature, it's not really like that. It's complementary. All right, so back into the horse stance. Mabu. I'm going to bring up my left hand, scoop with the right. Push and twist to my left. My left hand pulls down, my right hand circles up. Rotate both forearms. Watch the elbow on that right hand. Pull down and lift up. Rotate and across. Protect the face, protect the groin. Yang style is a little bit smaller, still considered a big frame, but a little bit smaller in scope. 
my research, Chen was talking about protect the face here, protect the groin. The Wu styles and Sun style are going to be an even smaller still, a little bit more in frame of the shoulders and hips. But we're playing out of Chen style here, so respect the Chen tradition. And you play big because that helps the intent and the mind to go through the motion, even if you're playing small. So, you know, you're not, if you use this in a protective way in, you know, either a sport or in real life, heaven forbid, real life, then you're used to playing this big energy. So even if you play it small, you're still going to be used to playing it big. And your body and your energy will still be big, which will create still a ready uh, amount of power. I'm going to do one more each side. Good. And from here, let's reverse. So rotate the forearms. The left hand smooths down. The right hand pushes. Pull down. Lift up. Push. Do one more each side. Good. Let it come down. Let's engage slowly. Now we're going to again do the sideways walking, but with both hands. This is going to be more the wave hands like moving clouds or cloud hands or wave hands, however it gets translated. That's a little bit more right out of the routine. So this is going to be Again, something like this, some of this was broken down to be able to, to build up the routine over time. So this is going to be a little more right out of the routine. Got the left hand, right hand underneath, pull down, lift up. I'm going to shift my weight over, lift up the left heel and step. Step in, see the hands and feet are together. So hands and feet, elbows, knees, shoulders, hips. The six outside harmonies. Keeping those in mind together helps with timing, which is important in internals to keep everything working as one uh, integrated unit. Now I'm going to reverse it, step back out, right hand leads, and one more. Okay, so a moment. It's super dry. Okay, I need my tea. We have one hand spiral at the side. So this is again going to be another one where we're going to have to be really careful about making sure sternum, navel lined up. That we're not kind of here. You can tell that's that's kind of not pointing together. We want to be careful of that. We also want to be careful that we do not hinge. We stay straight. 
and we're still pushing from heel to heel, still turning side to side. You see how all this moves as one unit, kind of pivots. If I keep my head looking at you, that might illustrate the pivoting a little bit better. Normally, like the head's going to be, you know, that center line of the face is going to be in line with the sternum and the navel as we go like this, leading with the eyes. But you can might be able to see the pivot better like this. This is what we're talking about, pivot. All this, one unit together and pushing side to side as we do that. So the hand's gonna be twisting to the side, both ways, both sides. All right, back in our horse stance. I'm gonna start with my left side. So it's, um, again, it's almost like, in fact, like I'm talking to you and cleaning a wall at the same time. So I pull back, pull down, scoop, and lift. So it's the same basic motion as before. The one hand spiraling in front. We're just now focused on the side. Getting better use of our three-dimensional space. Watch the knees. We don't want to buckle in. We don't want to like buckle in this way. We don't want to be too far out that way. Knee and foot still lined up. Knee and foot still lined up. I'm going to do one more. Now, one of the things that helped really drive this home for me, and I'm going to reverse. So now I come back, lift and push. Smooth down, rotate the forearm, lift and push. About, um, be going on six years ago now, about three different things on my spine that I didn't know was going on decided to go on all at once. Long story short, a um, lot of nerve damage and a lot of problems. It was my sciatic problems and knee problems I thought were different things and congenital turned out to be from my back. Still probably congenital. One more here. We're going to switch sides. Up and back. But for four months, maybe this whole leg from at least here down through the foot, it's pretty much numb. No, at best I would get pins and needles. Over time it started creeping down and the majority of the time it was from like the knee down through the foot was numb, couldn't feel it uh, because of my back. Still played every day, still played every day. Was still able to get decent stances out of it do one more going this way and was still except for the the first week it went out was still teaching my class and then when work resumed because it was during the summer I was still able to function at work why how you might ask because of my alignments because of that sort of balance, that proprioception learned from playing internals. That alignment between the back, the hip, the knee, and the foot, through the ankle even, allowed me to be able to, two more, still be able to play, still be able to teach, still be able to work and function. Good even without fully feeling the leg. And I had done enough practice over the years to know that, okay, it's about 16 years into this at that point in time. So I was, I had enough practice with my alignments that I didn't need to keep looking down and worry about it. I knew when I stepped out, even with being pigeon toed and even with that injury and the numbness, I knew because of the practice and, and, and the, 
intent I had had before that, keeping those alignments, I knew I was able to play okay. And I would feel the other leg to be able to check. Now, the first couple of weeks, I was still kind of checking a little bit because I'm like, Ooh, but still able to work. Okie dokie. So we're going to do, um, this one is uh, vertical circles, almost like bicycling. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more familiar to you if you've seen some of my videos on playing the, the different planes, because you have the coronal plane, vertical plane, horizontal plane. So we're going to play vertical, forward, and back. So it's almost like bicycles and then like pulling a rope. Okay, let me try this here. That's a little better. So back down. Push to the left. So again, now watch the hands here. Might be easier to see it like this. Watch the hands here, how they complement. When this starts coming down, this starts coming up. When this starts coming forward, this starts coming back. And you need to have those in internals because we're almost like dealing with the pressures in the body. So you need to be able to balance those out. And in that circular nature, that spherical nature actually, it should be there being correct. One more each hand. And now we're going to reverse. So it's like pull and same thing. Back, forward, down, up. And again, leading from here. So those circles should be made in the lower Dantian. And it gets expressed through the arms. Without, my watch, I'm not swimming the shoulders. Shoulders are still down. One more each side. Good. So we're going to step through and it's almost going to be like step and like hit, step through, hit. Now watch my hands too. It's same thing. As I come in, I'm coming out. In, coming out. And then we're going to reverse step, which is still going to be in and out, down. Readjust, up, in, out, down, not just step, step, step. The backwards one is going to be seen, uh, especially in, in Chen and Yang, be called repulse monkey or curve back arms. This one you see, and especially the, the old frame first routine for Chen's Da Lao Jiao Ilu. Uh, and then you can play that and then go back into curve back arms or repulse monkey with that. They're kind of uh, depending upon how you want to step, but you still want to have correct Taiji stepping, not just sort of just sort of thing. So, feet even, shift left, toe out 45 right, shift the weight. I'm going to step out, bring up both hands, step hand and foot together, toe out as I pull in. I step and push through. Notice the arc of my step. Toe out, change the hands, step through, change. We're going to do a couple laps with this because there's so much, so little space. So you can play with or keep going. I'm going to do one more. Now from here, I'm going to reverse. I'm going to bring up both palms, lift up the heel. Now, since this is Chen style, when I step back and out, pull down and push, my palm's going to be down. Yang style up, Chen palm down. Up, in together, out together. So everything crosses that center plane at same time. Okay. 
and out of room. Good. Now I'm going to go again, stepping out. Last one. And reverse. One more. Good. Okay. This one is, it might seem a little weird, but again, it's getting the whole body to move all one thing together and getting this to really start driving. So we're going to do one hand at a time here. So it's, it's going to be like rolling the wrist around the hip. And as we do that, whole body rolls, rolls. Good. We do one way, we do the other. Two more. Good. And we're switch. Other side. I'm on my right. Rolling around the hip, leading from here. One more. Good. Both hands. Reverse. Good. Okay, we're almost done. So this one is pretty much directly right out of the routines. I think all four, the Laoja and the Zinja have it. Um, I'm going to call it hold up the robe and it's going to be both hands only we're going to have a split stance or a bow stance with it. We're still going to use the whole body together. Come up, press down. So this arm is almost like pressing and smoothing. This arm is going to come up and then we like lift up. We got like a robe, kind of lift up the robe and down and we're going to reverse it too. So it's going to be go. We're going to reverse still engage. I'm not at no point and when my hands come here, they just sort of dead. Because I mean, it's trying to, it's like trying to fill up the bathtub, you keep pulling the plug, you just keep dumping out the water, stay engaged with it. That doesn't mean engage like this, tense. And no, 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 no. Still here, still engaged. Uh, and our reverse is almost like we're going to pick up, hike over the shoulder and push out, smooth down lift and push uh we're also going to have a stepping with that there's a couple different ways to do it i'll show you both and there will be a um like a roll back retreat step with that as well uh and then we got one more thing after that so we're almost done so hold up the rope oh, son. so with my bow stance about shoulder width 
about shoulder width long as well. So if I turn this way, I'm about shoulder width. I have to cheat this front foot out just a little bit because again, pigeon toed, but this helps keep this knee and foot aligned. When I come back at that 45, knee and foot aligned. 45 to square straight is what we're going to do with our hips, therefore the shoulders as well. So I'm going to start up front, circle up the hands, rotate the forearms, look where my elbow is too. Elbows down here, wrist is up here. Elbow up here, that means shoulders too much engaged, too much tense. You want down. So I draw back, pull down, press forward. Circle up. Come across and back, down and forward. Nice straight back, tailbone still tucked in. Feel that root through the heel into the ground. Two more. One more. Now I'm going to reverse. Grab, lift up, and push. And watch how the arm rolls. It's almost like I'm engaged shoulder, tricep, elbow, forearm, wrist, hands, fingers. It rolls. Two more. Last one. Good. Now I'm going to switch feet. I'm going to come up. Weight shifts to the right. Step back left. Roll back. Hold up the robe. Two more. Last one. And reverse. Grab, pick up, and push. Excellent. Let me finish my tea here. It's again very dry. <sighs> Thank you, tea. All right. So we're going to do the stepping with that. There's a couple ways to do that. Like I said, uh, I'm going to kind of show you both. One is kind of like a, you know, um, almost like a figure eight. Uh, and then there's another one that you'll, if you look up some of the other Chen Zhao Wang stuff, he'll usually do it almost like with an advancing step. Uh, one side and then play the other. Uh, so I'm going to show you like the figure eight motion first and then the advancing step. And with each of those, the it's like we had that palm here is going to be a step back. Again, this like horizontal circle. Brush to the side. So we have like um, a rollback, like a loop. 
and step back. And step back and step back. So I might actually, I'm gonna head to you this time and, and across, I'll show you both. Cause these might be, I don't know if you can hear me actually, I'm gonna show you this way and across cause these might be a little bit more tricky than just the kind of cycling through with the one hand. So first like the figure eights. So again, we're gonna step out like we were come up and we're going right into the other side as we step through and press and right into the other side. Now notice too, I'm not leaning up with my shoulder. Shoulders are still down. And I'm going to bring this hand up, step back, I think this is down, over, do one more. Now again, from the horizontal. Now notice I'm not rocking back all the way. The only time you really see that are in those simplified Beijing compulsory routines from the 50s, not really in the traditional ones. So I'm going to step back now. So we're getting a lot of those planes working on. We get some horizontal here. Done a lot of vertical, a lot of coronal. Okay, so now I'm going to show, I'm going to go left side, uh, going this vertical way towards you with the advancing step, which is almost, it's, it's, it looks, if you've seen some of the other Shingy videos, it's going to look a little bit more like some of the Shingy stuff. Uh, and then I'll step back and then I'll do the right side going this way. So again, I'm trying to save on some time here, but so you see both. Come up, in, half step up, and then go right into it. But instead of stepping through, you half step up. And it's when the weight comes forward, when you would step, slide step up. This is like a Xing Yi step. Fast, it would look like this. Like um, Bong Chuan, Pao Chuan, Hong, uh, ba, yeah. Oh, it can be even with uh, Chuan Chuan, but you see mostly with Bong and Pao Chuan. Hong Chuan too, but Hong Chuan also has those angles it's working on a little bit more. Good. I'm going to do the right side, but so you also kind of see the other angle. And my weight goes with the hands. As my hands come forward, my weight comes up. As I circle back, my weight comes back and I can lift and step. I do not step while there's weight on the foot, on the leg. That would be double weighted. And back. And what you can do here, we got one more as seen in it Get in here. So we'll come up. You can keep your hands on your hips. You can keep them down. I'm going to put my weight. I'm going to cheat out a little bit again because of my feet. Bend the knee. Shift weight right. Lifting up left leg. And pointing the toe. Trying to get the knee above the hip and hold. I'm going to 
slowly come down, toe out, slowly shift the weight, plant, and lift the knee. Try and get it above that hip, point the toe. And what you can do if you like, we'll circle up, bring the wrists up, elbows down, lift the fingers, engage the palms, pressing down, shift weight to the left, lift up the right heel, step in together, attention stance. Okay, good. So that is roughly. <laughs> the Chan Si Gong uh, from Chen Jiao Wang. Uh, the sort of lineage holder, main guy for the Chen, for sort of like the generation of, uh, older than mine. Uh, his nephew Chen Bing is the sort of lineage holder, main sort of patriarch for what would be my generation, basically. So Gen X. Um, yeah, I just dated myself a little bit. My other references, I think, have done probably more damage in terms of that. Anyway, and again, it's part of it is, is to try and, and break down some of the larger forms, make them able to, to be understood uh, by a wider audience, to be able to have accessibility to them, to be able to teach some of the, the specific foundational parts of the art and then build back up on top of that. I've said it before, I'm a big foundations guy, big basics guy. Those will always be there for you. You know, when you start getting older and things start hurting, things start stop healing as fast as they used to, uh, a lot of the flexibility or something starts kind of, eh, maybe not what it was before, and some things just say bye-bye. Uh, maybe some of the conditioning gets a little, because again, the body's just getting older. The basics are always gonna be something that you can have. So you might not be able to get, you know, when the back went, that sort of dropping down, you know, dragon tail sweep thing on the ground, that kind of went goodbye. You know, some of the stretching stuff that I had done in there, I still keep my stretching up. I can still get low stances. My, my flexibility is still pretty good. Just a couple things here and there. You know, I think a couple things, once I hit like 32, that was a wrap. And my body just went, no, stop. You're not doing this anymore. And then, you know, we get older. I'm still pretty, you know, there's, there hasn't been a whole lot of that in my life, thankfully, thus far now. But what? Uh, and part of it is because, again, I keep working basics. You know, I do conditioning, do some weight stuff, some body weight stuff, and I play internals every single day. And I have for almost 22 years. And I'm very thankful for that opportunity to be able to do that. Uh, but I, I will never stop just sort of like, hey, you know what's awesome? Basics fundamentals, how to break stuff down, because once you break it down, you can build it up and it will be, you know, stronger, faster, smoother, maybe a little sexier than before. So, all right. Uh, again, the usual youtube -y stuff, like, subscribe, share, all those other things for this. Uh, I hope it's useful. I hope it helps. Uh, or at the very least, inspires maybe some further research and, and people figuring out what works for them. All right. Thank you very kindly. I appreciate you all. Have fun.